Hi, I'm Megan. Welcome to today's live reading of She's My Rhinestone Cowgirl by Brooke May, presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Join me. Prologue, Trinity, 15 years old. The trembling on my feet is rattling all the way up my legs as I carefully pick my way up the stairs to my bedroom. One tiptoed step at a time, I make sure that there is no possible way I'm going to make a sound to avoid what might otherwise be my downfall. My parents may love the natural look of the hardwood my mom found years hidden and worn under the nasty brown shag carpet my grandma adored and thought was better than anything else. There's nothing great about having to rake your carpet after vacuuming, but it's horrible when you're attempting to sneak back into the house and get to your room after leaving for early morning mudding with your boyfriend and best friend. A best friend who is already on her way back into town to her own home to get cleaned up for our day and likely cackling like a mad woman with the fun we just had far back in the property. No one would catch us and for the trouble I'm likely going to get into if I'm caught. And a boyfriend who didn't want to leave me to the wrath of my mom he knows will likely be waiting if I didn't move fast enough. At least Shooter could go home without worry of getting in trouble. He's sweet to worry, but I can do this. I've done it plenty of other times without getting caught. Just because I have somewhere to be this afternoon doesn't mean anything will change. If I can make it to the bathroom, I'll, I can be cleaned up before mom is ready to assault me with every beauty device she'll have spread out on her vanity in her own bathroom for me to sit before. Three more steps. That is all it is going to take for me to get to the next stage of my getaway plan to freedom. Two, I'm crawling on hands and tiptoes now, just like I did when I was little. What crap. One slipper clad foot taps impatiently mocking me at how busted I've just become, dashing all my hopes of escaping to have fun like this again. She's likely been watching me from the moment I slipped in, too focused on the boards under my bare feet rather than up ahead of me as I counted the steps. How else am I to know which ones to avoid if I'm not looking? Leather slippers, since shoes aren't allowed in the house, lead up to the snug starched jeans, a rhinestone encrusted belt with a buckle big enough to eat finger foods off of, and a shiny pale green pearl snap blouse before I'm on the face I inherited. And she isn't pleased. The darkest brown eyes that they almost look black frown down at me while her onyx hair feathers out around her. Oh, hi, Mom. How are you this morning? The pep in my speech is seen through instantly. It's difficult to be nonchalant when you're pantless thanks to the mud-caked pair I have running in the washing machine right now along with my shirt and socks. Thankfully, Dad had a somewhat clean hoodie hanging there for me to slip into before attempting to get upstairs. My hair is an entirely different matter. The black is far more of a reddish chocolate right now thanks to the mud steadily drying up there. Don't you start, young lady. Crossing her arms, I feel a lecture coming on, but I know we don't have time. That'll wait until I'm showered and sitting in her torture chair. I know, I know, waving my hands in the air, the sleeves slip from how much, from how worn out they are to show off how much mud I have there. I should have already had myself ready for your brand of torture. My eyes nearly pop out of my head with my slip up. Torture. A perfectly sculpted brow arches up, but doesn't wrinkle her smooth forehead. Benefit of Botox, I guess. I'll never have any interest in doing that when I'm older. I love my mom, but she is far vainer than I am, no matter how much she tries to change that about me. Sorry. Wincing, I take the final step up, so I don't have to crane my neck to look up at her anymore. I'll go shower and then blow out my hair for you to get to work. Turning, I start to make my way to the bathroom. I'm forced to share with my little brother. I don't get very far. Make sure you put product in it before blowing it out. We don't need any of it damaged. She calls out as if I don't know what I'm doing. I hate to break it to her, but this isn't my first rodeo. Literally. I've spent plenty of mornings getting as dirty as possible, either by having fun or doing chores around the ranch before I had to start getting ready for the various rodeos or rodeo pageants mom decided to put me in. She's not all to blame. It wasn't like I was forced. I found I enjoyed doing them. Now that I'm at the age, I have a chance, 
of becoming the princess of Elkfield Rodeo. She allowed me to choose if I wanted to continue or not. And I'm only making her mad. I'm not committing like I should. As much as I'm not a fan of getting all dolled up and it's become what everyone else sees as a spoiled rich girl playing cowgirl, I love it. The charity, kindness, and overall positive nature spread to the world throughout through just becoming rodeo royalty is fantastic. So is the sisterhood I formed with the other girls who have been doing this just as long as I have. Sure, there's a rare one who is a snob and fits the stereotype. But for the most part, we all have each other's backs and support another along with the community surrounding us. My mom is a former Miss Rodeo Wyoming and got me started as soon as I was old enough for little Miss pageants. And now happy to see I'm interested in continuing, even if I'm not being completely committed. I'm nowhere near being the type of rhinestone cowgirl like my mom or most and I plan on rocking the world off its axis by showing them that a simple girl like me can best represent our town, its rodeo, and someday the state of Wyoming, along with rodeo as a whole. For now, I need to get my butt in gear to get ready. Otherwise, I might miss out on seeing if I'm going to be the Elkfield Rodeo Princess for the second year in a row. The mud runs down my body, circling towards the drain. I'm going to have to scrub when we get home later and reminding me of when an embankment gave during the gave during all the rain last spring and washed out one of our pastures. The click of the door startles me. Mom knows nothing about privacy, which my brother has picked up on and barges in whenever he pleases. Trinity. Her tone has only changed a little bit. There's reluctance in there now. Mom. I call and then choke on a mouthful of mud that comes slipping down from the top of my head. There's a sigh. I'm not sure if it's due to the fact that she doesn't want to say something I should already know or if she's just getting impatient with me. We need to talk about Shooter Price. My hands freeze the scrubbing of my thick hair and my eyes open only to slam shut again when the shampoo pouring over me. Since you've made the decision... To put your focus into rodeo pageantry, you need to fully commit by ending things with him. Princesses and queens alike need to remain unattached in order to fulfill their duties to the crown. Shooter has become a distraction you don't need for your future, and I'm asking nicely rather than ordering this of you. The curtain pulls aside to reveal her concerned face. Mom! Covering myself is pointless. She does this all the damn time as well. End things with him today, Trinity. Otherwise, rethink your future and ask yourself if one boy is truly worth it. You're young and young love rarely lasts. The curtain slaps shut, but she doesn't leave, just growing quiet enough for me to think. I really like Shooter. He's funny, a blast, and someone I've known most of my life. I feel safe with him to be myself. We've only kissed a couple of times, since we started dating in February. Mom does have a point though. Can I wrestle with my future and the plans we've been making if I try to have him in my life too? Biting down on my lip, I know the answer before I can even get the words out in confirmation with her. Shooter will understand. <laughs>